Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, we will learn how to do the hysteresis band current control switching in the ANSYS Implorer software. In the previous videos, we did simulation of a single phase inverter and we considered the SPWM switching for the voltage and calculated the load current, load voltage, and evaluated the waveform harmonics. In this video, we are going to use a different methodology. You are familiar with this methodology, the hysteresis band current control, which is widely used in motor control. So, in this video, I am going to consider a simple example. Uh, single phase inverter but in the next videos we will consider a three phase load and replace the load with a permanent magnet motor and do some examples for the motor control so here you can see the logic this is the reference signal yes this one is the reference signal and we have the lower band, the upper band, and here you can see the push curves. This is the upper band curve, and this is the lower band. And here we can see the actual value of the current. Yes, when the actual value of the current touches the upper bound or lower bound, we perform the switching. So here we have a positive DC voltage and here we have a negative DC voltage and so on. You know, if we reduce the band width, the switching frequency increases. Let's try the example in ANSYS Simplorer software. Here, I am going to copy this Simplorer design. Here in this example, we performed the switching considering these conditions. The comparison of the reference signal with the carrier one. Okay, and here are results. Let me repeat the previous simulation and then I'm going to compare the simulation with this one. This is the voltage and this is the load current. What is the RMS value of the load current? 5.65. So, I copy this design, paste, and here we have a new design. So, just I should change these conditions. Okay, how we can change these conditions? Here, we should consider a reference signal for the current. Let's use the same current waveform here. I mean the same RMS value and the peak value. So, here we have the sine wave and we should delete this this is the reference current the amplitude is 1.41 or sqrt02 times 5.36 it was yes no 5.65 also we have harmonic in that waveform so Let's consider 5.6 here. Okay, just an example. And the frequency of the reference current is 50. So we don't get the input frequency and amplitude. This is the reference current. And we should consider a band width. Okay, and compare the real value of current with the reference current 
plus the bandwidth and minus the bandwidth. So I define this parameter bandwidth. So bandwidth divided by two is this region and bandwidth divided by two is this one, this interval. So here we can define or initialize a parameter. We have different ways we can define a local parameter here or we can use the formula block and define this parameter here. We discussed this in the previous videos. Bandwidth is equal to, let's consider 0.2 amps. Okay, so now we should change the conditions. This is the active state by the start and we have this condition first. Okay, we should update the condition. When we actually turn on the S1 and S2, when the value of current, the real value of the current, is lower than the reference signal minus the bandwidth divided by 2. So in this case, we turn on S1 and S2. So here we have this condition. When the value of the reference current dot val is lower than the load current minus bandwidth divided by 2. So for the load current, I can place an ampere meter here in series with the R1, but also we have access to the load current. That is simply R1 dot I. Yes, we discussed this before also. So here I write R1, the name of the resistance, dot I, its current. So when, excuse me, here I should cut this and this one. Okay, this is correct. When the real value of current is lower than the reference value minus bandwidth divided by 2, we turn on S1 and S2, this condition that we have. Okay. So when the value of the current, the real value of the current, R1.i, the load current, is higher than the reference current plus bandwidth divided by 2, we turn on S3 and S4. So let me copy this condition and just paste it here. Is higher than reference current plus this one, we apply negative DC voltage to the load. And actually we consider this bandwidth for the switching. I used a state blocks, but also we can use the hysteresis block that we discussed also this in the previous video. This is more accurate. So now let's run the simulation analyze i want to plot the load voltage and load current this is the load voltage and this is the load current you can see the effect of switching so if i increase the bandwidth the switching frequency reduces 
So bandwidth equal to 0.6, for example. And let's repeat the simulation. So here is the waveform of the voltage. And this is the current waveform. The RMS value and also you can calculate the peak value of the fundamental harmonic. So let's plot the curve, this curve, the reference current dot val minus bandwidth divided by two. So we don't have this variable here. We have this variable bandwidth in the design area. But I consider the bandwidth equal to 0 0.6 at trace and plus this one at trace. So we have the different y axis. So let's use the same y axis for all curves y1, y1, because I want to compare, and y1 also for this one. So you can see the push curves. Yes, the real value of the current, the upper bound, the lower bound, and also you can pull out the reference signal. And here on the same graph, we can plot the value of the load voltage that is VM1.V at trace. This is the voltage. So let's zoom. You can see the value of the output voltage when we perform the switchings. Okay, so let's zoom here. You can see the value of output voltage is 100 DC volt negative, 100 negative, and so on. So using these settings, we can do the hysteresis band current control in the ANSI Simplorer. We did this simulation for a single phase inverter. And in the next video, we will do it for a three-phase inverter. Thanks for watching.